Log entry 47290, Commander Vax Brighteye speaking. Today marks what should have been another mundane training cycle at the Galactic Military Academy. Ha! Should have been. But when has anything involving humans ever been mundane? The commander paused his recording, his four crystalline eyes blinking in rapid succession as he gazed through the reinforced observation window. The prestigious Centauri Combat Training Facility stretched before him, its gleaming chrome surfaces reflecting the light of three suns. Computer, continue log, he clicked his mandibles thoughtfully. For the past hundred cycles, the impenetrable challenge has stood as the ultimate test of military prowess. The record, held by the legendary Arcturus Legion, stands at 47 minutes and 13 seconds. Not a single cadet group has come within 10 minutes of that time, despite countless attempts by the finest warriors from 17 different species. Commander Bright Eye's exoskeleton rustled as he straightened his posture, a habit he'd developed during his 300 cycles of military service. But today, today we have our first batch of human cadets attempting the challenge. Stars help us all. Through the window, he watched as the transport pod descended onto the landing platform. The vessel's sleek design belied its reinforced nature, a necessity for carrying death worlders. The door hissed open, releasing a puff of high-pressure atmosphere. They're emerging now, Bright Eye narrated, his tone a mixture of professional detachment and barely concealed fascination. By the void, they move like predators, even in their casual stance. The human's designation as death worlders becomes apparent in every step they take. Three figures strode confidently across the platform. Their environmental suits, mandatory for non-humans in the facility, did little to hide their muscular frames. The leader, a tall female with dark skin and piercing eyes, carried herself with unmistakable authority. Behind her, a stocky male whose very footsteps seemed to make the platform vibrate, and a leaner, sharp-eyed male who appeared to be analyzing every detail of his surroundings. Computer, add personal note, Bright Eye clicked rapidly. Despite my centuries of experience, something about these humans makes my carapace tingle. Their psychological evaluation reports show them to be what was that human phrase? Ah, yes, adrenaline junkies. Apparently, they volunteered for this challenge after watching a single holovid of previous attempts. They actually laughed during the briefing. Laughed. A sudden commotion drew his attention. One of the junior instructors, a Proxima arachnoid, had accidentally dropped a plasma containment unit. Before anyone could react, the stocky human male had already crossed three meters of space and caught it one-handed. Stars above, Bright Eye muttered, forgetting his log was still recording. They're faster than our simulations suggested. This is either going to be the most impressive display in Academy history, or we're about to witness a spectacular disaster. Either way, I suspect the medical bay should be on standby. End log. Commander Bright Eye stood before the assembled crowd in the briefing amphitheater, his crystalline eyes sweeping across the diverse gathering of alien species. The excitement in the air was palpable, causing his sensory tendrils to tingle with the collective anticipation. Behold the impenetrable, he announced, activating the holographic display. A massive three-dimensional maze materialized in the center of the room, rotating slowly to showcase its complexity. Three kilometers of the most advanced defensive systems in the known galaxy, 27 autonomous combat drones, 15 gravity-shifting zones, five plasma barriers, three quantum lock chambers, and one absolutely impossible time record. The human cadets sat in the front row, their reactions nothing like the usual mix of awe and terror such briefings normally produced. Nina Rodriguez, the squad leader, was taking notes with an expression that looked suspiciously like a smirk. Marcus Stone, their tech specialist, had pulled out some archaic paper device and was sketching what appeared to be alternate routes through the complex. Thomas Chen, nicknamed Tank by his peers for obvious reasons, was actually dozing off. Perhaps, Bright Eye continued, mandibles clicking with mild irritation, our human guests would benefit from seeing some historical footage. Computer display. Attempt 47B, Arcturian Elite Squad. The hologram shifted to show a team of towering four-armed warriors methodically working their way to through the course. Their movements were precise their strategy flawless. This team held the record for 20 years, 
Time, 52 minutes, 8 seconds. Computer, display attempt 156C, Proxima Special Forces. A group of arachnoid commandos appeared, using their natural webbing abilities to create innovative solutions. They introduced three new techniques never seen before. Time, 49 minutes, 30 seconds. And finally, Bright Eye's voice took on a reverent tone, the current record holders. Attempt 223A, Arcturus Legion. The hologram showed a perfectly coordinated unit moving like a single organism through the course. 47 minutes, 13 seconds, unbeaten for a hundred years. Nina raised her hand, her face completely serious for the first time. Sir, quick question. These gravity shifting zones, they alternate between 0.5 and three standard gravities, correct? Correct, Cadet Rodriguez. And the quantum lock chambers require precise timing to navigate? Indeed, the phasing window is exactly 2.7 seconds. Nina turned to Marcus, who had finished his sketch. See? Told you it would be fun. From the back of the amphitheater, Commander Bright Eye heard the distinct sound of credit chits changing hands. The betting pool, strictly unofficial of course, had already reached astronomical levels. Most bets were on whether the humans would survive, let alone complete the course. Now then, Bright Eye addressed the three humans directly. Please state your names and specialties for the official record. Cadet Nina Rodriguez, sir. Tactical Command and Strategic Planning. Former parkour instructor, if that matters. She gave a smile that reminded Bright Eye of a Jovian hunting cat. Cadet Marcus Stone. Engineering and Systems Specialist. Also pretty good at speedrunning video games. The lean human's fingers never stopped moving, still making adjustments to his hand-drawn maps. Cadet Thomas Tank Chen. The massive human had finally woken up. Heavy weapons and close combat specialist. Former demolition expert. Really good at breaking stuff. A nervous whisper rippled through the alien audience. Breaking stuff? These humans were planning to break the impenetrable? Very well, Bright Eye concluded, trying to maintain his professional demeanor. The course will be ready in one standard hour. I suggest you use this time to... Actually, sir, Nina interrupted, standing up. We're ready now, unless there's more paperwork to fill out. The amphitheater erupted in a chaos of clicks, whistles, and translator-garbled exclamations. More credit shits changed hands. In the observation booth above, the medical team began double-checking their equipment. Commander Bright Eye's exoskeleton rattled slightly as he sighed. Very well, cadets. Report to the starting chamber in ten minutes. And please, try not to completely destroy our most prestigious training facility. Tang Chen's booming laugh echoed through the chamber. No promises, sir. No promises at all? Triple check the safety protocols? No. Quadruple check them. Senior technical officer Zena Six Arms darted between control stations, her multiple appendages flying over various holographic interfaces. These are humans we're dealing with. If there's a way to accidentally trigger a quantum cascade failure, they'll find it. The control room of the impenetrable buzzed with frantic activity. Maintenance drones zipped through the air like angry insects, running last-minute diagnostics on every system. The normal pre-challenge checklist of 100 items had been expanded to 300, specifically for this attempt. Medical Team Alpha, report status. Commander Bright Eye's voice crackled over the command channel. All 20 emergency med pods charged and ready, came the response from Dr. Lumina Swiftclaw. Her feline features twisted in concentration as she reviewed human biological data. We've adjusted the regeneration matrices for their unique physiology. Bone knitting units calibrated for their ridiculous skeletal density. Trauma team standing by with, wait, are these readings correct? Their adrenaline levels are already elevated, but their vital signs indicate excitement. Down in the preparation chamber, the three human cadets were causing even more concern. Tang Chen was doing one-armed push-ups while wearing his full combat gear. Nina Rodriguez was humming something called the final countdown while checking her equipment. Marcus Stone had somehow convinced the suit maintenance AI to give him access to its programming interface. S Security Chief, Bright Eye clicked into another channel. Status report. Not good, sir, the massive urinoid security chief rumbled. The betting pool has exceeded the GDP of three minor star systems. We've caught six different species trying to hack the course's surveillance feeds. The Galactic Sports Network is attempting to buy broadcast rights. 
And, sir, the humans are asking if they can stream this on something called Twitch. Bright Eye's exoskeleton creaked as he massaged his sensory nodes. Denied. This is a military training exercise, not an entertainment broadcast. Though, make sure we record everything. For training purposes, of course. Sir! A junior technician's voice cracked with panic. The human called Tank just asked if breaking through walls counts as finding an alternate route. What did you tell him? That it's against regulations. He looked disappointed. In the spectator areas, the atmosphere was reaching fever pitch. Representatives from 17 species packed the observation galleries, their natural bioluminescence creating a disco-like effect as emotions ran high. 2,000 credits on total course destruction. 3,000 on human injury in the first five minutes. 5,000 on... Wait, are they stretching? Who stretches before attempting the impenetrable? The Arcturian ambassador, whose species held the current record, leaned forward with professional interest. Notice their preparation methodology. The small one keeps checking his drawings. The female leader is mentally mapping trajectories. I can tell by her eye movements. And the large one, is he doing warm-up exercises or attempting to intimidate the course itself? Commander Bright Eye accessed the final systems check. Everything was reading optimal, which somehow made him more nervous. Time check? Two minutes to start, sir, Zena reported. All systems are green. Safety barriers at maximum. Medical teams in position. Emergency shutdown protocols on standby. Course integrity fields at 200% normal power. We've even installed additional structural reinforcement around the quantum lock chambers. Though honestly, sir, I don't think it will make a difference if they really decide to... One minute, the automated system announced. In the prep chamber, Nina Rodriguez gathered her team. Their final conversation was picked up by the chamber sensors. Remember the plan? She asked. Marcus patted his equipment. Hack what we can, bypass what we can't. Break everything else, Tank added cheerfully. And most importantly... All three grinned. Have fun! The observation galleries fell silent. The medical teams held their breath. The technical staff said their prayers to various deities. Begin in ten, nine, eight. Commander Bright Eye felt his carapace tingle with anticipation. In 300 years of military service, he'd never felt such a mix of dread and excitement. Seven, six, five. The humans moved into position looking more like predators ready to pounce than cadets about to attempt a training course. Four, three, two. Stars help us all, Bright Eye muttered. One, commence. By all the frozen stars of the void, Commander Bright Eye breathed, his crystalline eyes struggling to track the chaos unfolding before him. They're not even following the designated entry protocol. The first section of the impenetrable was a series of laser grid quarters designed to teach precise movement and patience. Most species spent at least five minutes calculating the optimal path. The humans? They were dancing through it. Literally dancing. Sir! Zena Six Arms called out, her appendages flying across multiple control panels. Cadet Rodriguez is using the laser grid's own reflection patterns to... What in the galaxy? She's created a timing sequence by humming something called Stayin' Alive. Behind Nina, Marcus Stone moved with surprising grace for a tech specialist. His movements synchronized perfectly with his leader's improvised rhythm. And Tank? Well, he's not supposed to be able to do that, the Arcturian ambassador commented, mandibles hanging open in shock. Those corridors are specifically designed to prevent running. The gravity fluctuations alone should make it impossible to maintain that speed. Tang Chen was indeed running, full speed through a corridor of shifting gravity fields and lethal laser grids. His solution to the complex timing puzzle? Pure momentum and what appeared to be happy ignorance of physics. Approaching first defensive drone cluster, Zena announced. Standard procedure is to disable them sequentially, using the provided, oh no. What do you mean, oh no? Bright Eye demanded. Cadet Stone just accessed the drone control network. He's... Sir, he's making them fight each other. The observation gallery erupted in a mixture of outrage and admiration as the maintenance screen showed the supposedly unhackable combat drones engaging in what appeared to be a robot dance battle. Time check, Bright Eye called out. Three minutes, 47 seconds, came the stunned reply. They're already past the first quarter of the course. 
The humans had reached the first quantum lock chamber. This obstacle had been specifically designed to teach the importance of precise timing and careful planning. Teams typically spent several minutes studying the phase patterns before attempting to cross. Nina Rodriguez took one look at the shifting quantum barriers and grinned. Tank, remember that time we played hot potato with plasma grenades? Same timing? Tank's booming laugh echoed through the chamber. Marcus, if you would. The tech specialist had already interfaced with the chamber's control system. Got it. Quantum harmonics matched to Tank's footsteps in three, two, one. What happened next would later be described in the official report as a complete violation of established quantum physics. Tank Chen, all 120 kilos of him, began bouncing between quantum lock spaces like a pinball, each impact creating a resonance that the other two humans used to slip through the barriers. Seven minutes, 12 seconds, Zena announced, her voice weak with disbelief. They're halfway through. In the medical bay, Dr. Lumina Swiftclaw stared at her monitors in confusion. This isn't right. Their stress levels should be through the roof, but these readings, they're enjoying themselves. The next section was the pride of the impenetrable's design, the gravity maze, multiple intersecting corridors with rapidly shifting gravity fields requiring careful navigation and team coordination. Most species took at least 15 minutes to navigate it safely. The humans took one look at it and decided safety was optional. You know what this reminds me of, Nina called out to her team, that anti-grav gymnastics competition back at the academy? The one we got banned from? Marcus asked, already typing furiously into his control pad. Exactly, Tank, you're up. What followed was either a masterpiece of tactical improvisation or a complete mental breakdown of military discipline, depending on who you asked. Tang Chen positioned himself in the center of the gravity field intersection, braced his legs and began acting as a human launching pad for his teammates. This is unprecedented, the Arcturian ambassador exclaimed. They're using the shifting gravity fields to amplify their momentum. The timing required for this would be impossible, Bright Eye finished, watching as Nina and Marcus literally bounded from wall to ceiling to wall, using tanks' position launches to maintain their trajectory. Someone check if they're actually having a party in there. The final obstacle was the plasma barrier gauntlet. Fifteen consecutive barriers of superheated plasma, each requiring precise deactivation codes and careful timing to navigate. The current record for this section alone was 12 minutes. The humans reached it at the nine-minute mark. Marcus, Nina called out. Already on it. Tank, remember those plasma surfing tricks we practiced? The ones that got us banned from the engineering lab? Same principle, bigger waves. Commander Bright Eye watched in horror as Marcus Stone somehow reversed the plasma barrier harmonics, creating what could only be described as a plasma wave. Tank Chen, defying every safety protocol in existence, used his reinforced armor to surf the wave, creating gaps in the barriers that his teammates used to slip through. Time? Bright Eye asked, not sure he wanted to know the answer. 11 minutes, 23 seconds, sir, Zena replied, her voice barely a whisper. They're, they're approaching the final chamber. The observation gallery had gone completely silent. The medical team sat useless beside their unused equipment. The betting pool operators had stopped taking wagers, too stunned to continue. Through it all, the sounds of human laughter echoed through the impenetrable's halls, along with fragments of conversation that would later become legendary in the Academy's archives. Hey, this is way easier than that obstacle course we built in the cargo bay. Next time, we should do it blindfolded. Anyone hungry? I'm thinking pizza after this. Commander Bright Eye clicked his mandibles thoughtfully. Computer, add personal note to log. I believe we may need to reconsider our definition of impossible. Final chamber breach in three, two, one. Zena's voice cracked with disbelief as she watched her monitors. Time recorded at, no, this can't be right. Computer, verify course completion time. Course completion verified. Total time, 13 minutes, 27 seconds. The control room erupted in chaos. The Arcturian ambassador fainted, all four of his arms going limp simultaneously. Three different betting system AIs crashed, unable to calculate the payout ratios for such an improbable event. 
Someone in the observation gallery started speaking in tongues. Commander Bright Eyes stared at the final chamber's feed, where the three human cadets were performing what appeared to be a celebratory dance routine. Technical analysis now, he barked, trying to maintain some semblance of military discipline. Zena Six Arms pulled up the dasa, her appendages trembling. Sir, preliminary breakdown shows they... They broke every single established protocol. Every single one. Specifics, officer. They completed the laser grid section in 47 seconds by treating it as a, quote, dance floor. Previous minimum time, 4 minutes, 12 seconds. The drone section, 2 minutes, 3 seconds. Cadet Stone apparently reprogrammed our combat drones too, and I quote from his running commentary, throw the sickest robot dance party this side of the galaxy. Previous minimum time, 8 minutes, 45 seconds. Dr. Lumina Swiftclaw burst into the control room, waving her medical readings frantically. Commander, you need to see this. Their endorphin levels during the challenge, they're consistent with, with someone having fun at an amusement park. The quantum lock chambers? Bright Eye pressed on, feeling his exoskeleton creak under the stress. One minute, 52 seconds, Zena continued. They treated quantum physics like a game of catch. Quantum physics, sir. The gravity maze? Three minutes flat. They turned it into some sort of three-dimensional sports game. And the plasma barriers? She paused, mandibles clicking in distress. Yes? They surfed them, sir. They literally surfed on plasma waves. One minute, 45 seconds. The safety systems didn't even have time to register a violation because the sensors couldn't believe what they were seeing. The statistical breakdown appeared on the main screen. Previous record, 47, 13. New record, 13, 27. Improvement, 71.4%. Safety protocols bypassed, 842. Physics laws challenged, 13. New techniques discovered, 37. System errors logged, 1,291. Medical alerts triggered, zero. Fun had, maximum. Sir! a junior technician called out. The humans are asking if they can run it again. They say they spotted some shortcuts they missed the first time. Commander Bright Eyes sank into his command chair, all four eyes blinking rapidly. Shortcuts? Shortcuts? They just turned the most sophisticated military training course in the galaxy into their personal playground. Through the observation window, he could see Nina Rodriguez mapping out something on her hand-drawn plans. Tank Chen was doing cool-down stretches, looking disappointed that nothing had needed to be broken. Marcus Stone appeared to be trading computer tips with a very confused maintenance drone. Commander, Zena said quietly, what do we put in the official record? This goes against every established doctrine we have about course completion methodology. Bright Eye watched as the human cadets continued their celebration, their joy completely genuine and utterly baffling to every alien observer. Recorded exactly as it happened, he finally declared. Every impossible detail, every violation of protocol, every moment of human chaos, and add a special note to the course description. Sir? Warning. Course difficulty rating may vary significantly for death worlders who view lethal obstacles as entertainment opportunities. The facility's AI chose that moment to make an announcement that would be forever preserved in Academy history. Attention. New course record established. Previous record rendered statistically irrelevant. Recommended course updates, all of them. In the final chamber, totally oblivious to the existential crisis they'd caused in their alien observers, the three human cadets were already planning their next challenge. Hey, Tank called out. Anyone up for trying it backwards? The emergency meeting of the Galactic Military Academy's High Council was called to order precisely one hour after the human's record-breaking run. The chamber, normally a model of dignity and decorum, more closely resembled a species-wide therapy session. They used the quantum lock chambers as a playground. The Proxima representative was still shedding stress mold from their exoskeleton. Do you understand what this means? Every tactical manual we have on quantum barrier penetration is now obsolete. The manuals? The selenite admiral's bioluminescent patches were flashing in agitation patterns previously only seen during solar flares. What about our entire understanding of gravity field navigation? They turned it into a game. A game! Commander Bright Eyes stood at the podium, 
his crystalline eyes scanning the chaos before him. The Arcturian delegation was still reviewing the footage frame by frame, muttering calculations and shaking their heads. The Jovian contingent had entered a meditation trance, trying to process what they'd witnessed, and the Uranoid security chief was stress-eating mineral supplements by the handful. If I may have your attention, Bright Eye clicked his mandibles for silence. The technical division has completed their initial analysis of the human's performance. The chamber fell quiet, all eyes, optical sensors, and sensory arrays focusing on him. First, regarding course integrity, despite appearances, the impenetrable suffered minimal physical damage. However, we've logged 1,291 system errors, 842 bypass safety protocols, and 37 previously unknown tactical approaches that our systems categorize as, and I quote, this should not be possible. Zena Six Arms activated the holographic display, showing a time lapse of the human's run. Note how Cadet Rodriguez's leadership style completely ignored traditional hierarchical command structures in favor of what she calls vibing with the team. Cadet Stone's technical innovations included reprogramming our combat drones to, and again I quote, drop sick beats. And Cadet Chen's approach to obstacle navigation can best be described as enthusiastic disregard for physical limitations. But the most concerning finding, Dr. Lumina Swiftclaw stepped forward, comes from their biological data. During the entire run, their stress responses indicated not fear or concentration, but pure enjoyment. They treated our most advanced military training facility as an entertainment venue. The recognition ceremony, scheduled for later that day, had to be modified significantly. The traditional solemn march of achievement was replaced by what the humans called a high five line. The ceremonial robes of victory had to be reinforced to accommodate Tang Chen's enthusiastic victory dance. And the ancient chant of glory was somewhat overshadowed by Nina Rodriguez, teaching a group of fascinated Selenite cadets, something called the wave. In light of these unprecedented events, Commander Bright Eye announced from the ceremony podium, the Academy Council has approved several immediate changes to our training protocols. The assembled crowd listened in stunned silence as he read out the new guidelines. 1. All course difficulty ratings now must specify non Death Worlder and Death Worlder categories. 2. The definition of impossible has been officially revised to include the phrase, except for humans who think it might be fun. 3. Safety protocols have been upgraded to account for species who view mortal danger as a recreational activity. 4. Combat drone programming now includes a mandatory dance mode lockout. 5. The phrase, what's the worst that could happen, has been classified as a Class 3 security threat when spoken by human cadets. Marcus Stone, who had somehow modified his ceremonial uniform to include additional power ports, raised his hand. Does this mean we can't try our zero-gravity parkour idea? That would be a negative, Cadet Stone. What about underwater? Tank Chen asked, hopefully. Also, no. With blindfolds? Nina Rodriguez suggested. Commander Bright Eye felt his carapace twitch, especially not with blindfolds. Later that evening, in the privacy of his office, Bright Eye recorded his final assessment. Personal log addendum. Today has fundamentally changed our understanding of not just military training, but the very nature of species limitations. The humans didn't just break our records. They broke our preconceptions. He paused, watching through his window, as the three cadets demonstrated their techniques to an eager crowd of alien students. Tank was teaching a group of Proxima arachnoids how to use momentum instead of fighting it. Nina was explaining the concept of parkour to some very nervous-looking selenites. Marcus had attracted a crowd of technical specialists who were trying to understand how he'd turn military-grade combat protocols into what he called a party mix. We designed the impenetrable to be the ultimate test of military precision, careful planning, and disciplined execution. The humans turned it into a celebration of creativity, teamwork, and what they call good vibes. Perhaps, perhaps that's the greatest lesson here. Through the speakers, he could hear Tank's booming laugh as he caught two Proxima cadets who had tried to copy his gravity-defying moves. Nina was now leading an impromptu acrobatics class, with species of all kinds attempting to learn human-style maneuvers. 
Marcus had somehow convinced the facility's main AI to play background music. Final recommendation, redesignate the impenetrable as the challenge and remove all references to impossibility from its description. After all, as our human friends have shown us, nothing is truly impossible. It's just waiting for someone crazy enough to think it's fun. Commander, a panicked voice called from his communicator. The humans are teaching the maintenance drones to break dance. Bright Eye clicked off his log with a sigh that was half exasperation, half amusement. Carry on, but activate the backup processors. And someone make sure they don't try to teach the quantum barriers to do the wave again. In the distance, he could have sworn he heard Tang Chen ask, so who wants to try it backwards and blindfolded? One month later, Commander Bright Eye stood before the Academy Council, presenting his final report on what had become known as the human incident. The long-term implications are both profound and, frankly, terrifying, he stated, pulling up a series of hollow projections. Applications for human instructors have increased by 300%. Every training course in the Academy now has a special notation asking if humans consider it fun enough. And perhaps most significantly, our entire understanding of what constitutes a challenge has been fundamentally altered. The council chamber's displays showed footage from recent training sessions. Proxima cadets were incorporating dance moves into their combat routines. Selenite engineers were adding what they called style points to their technical solutions. A group of Arcturian warriors were actually laughing during their gravity resistance training. But the most unexpected outcome, Bright Eye continued, has been the dramatic improvement in interspecies cooperation. It seems the human's approach of treating lethal challenges as team building exercises has caught on. The footage shifted to show various training groups attempting to replicate the human's methods. There were plenty of failures, several spectacular crashes, and an impressive number of safety violations. But the success rates were undeniable. In conclusion, Bright Eye clicked his mandibles thoughtfully. I recommend we formally adopt what Cadet Rodriguez calls the fun factor into our standard training protocols. As she put it, and I quote, if you're not having a good time while defying death, you're doing it wrong. Later that evening, he added a final entry to his personal log. The humans have forever changed the way we approach military training. Where we saw obstacles, they saw opportunities. Where we demanded precision, they added style. Where we expected discipline, they brought joy. And somehow, impossibly, their method works. He paused, checking the latest course completion statistics. Success rates across all species have improved by 47%. Training-related stress injuries are down by 62%. And most surprisingly, our combat readiness assessments show a 78% increase in unit cohesion. All because three human cadets decided our most difficult course looked, in their words, totally awesome. A notification popped up on his screen. The three humans had submitted their final research project before graduating. The title made his exoskeleton rattle. 101 Ways to Make Military Training More Fun, A Human Guide to Turning Certain Death into Team-Building Exercises. Computer, add final note, Bright Eye said watching as a new batch of cadets attempted the challenge, now with added musical accompaniment. Perhaps the greatest lesson we've learned is that the most effective warriors aren't those who master our carefully designed protocols, but those who enjoy finding new ways to break them. End log. As he prepared to leave his office, a priority alert flashed across his screen. His crystalline eyes widened as he read the message. Notice. Cadets Rodriguez, Stone, and Chen have been appointed as special advisors to the Academy's Course Design Committee. Their first proposal, the Impossible Challenge, 2.0, now with added parkour sections. Below that was a personal note from Nina. Hey, Commander, quick question. How do you feel about lava courses? Tank's been working on some really cool ideas involving magnetic surfing, and Marcus says he can make the safety protocols at least 60% less nervous about it. We're thinking of calling it the really impenetrable. You know, for fun. Commander Bright Eye stared at the message for a long moment before reaching for his emergency mineral supplements. As he popped them into his mandibles, he couldn't help but notice the sound of distant laughter echoing through the academy halls, accompanied by what seemed to be a remix of combat drone alert signals. The future of military training had arrived, and apparently it had a soundtrack. 
Computer, he sighed. Better order more med pods and see if we can't get some heat-resistant dance floors installed. Something tells me we're going to need them. In the distance, Tang Chen's voice boomed across the training grounds. Who wants to try anti-gravity paintball? The resulting cheer from cadets of all species told Bright Eye everything he needed to know about the future of the Galactic Military Academy. It was going to be impossible, improbable, and above all, fun.